Well, today my question is, can you live in Vietnam? So while we watch my trip to work, uh, let's discuss some of the issues related to a uh, Westerner living in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. I've been there for 10 years and um, yeah, I suppose I love it. I, I mean, I couldn't see myself living back in Australia. So um, let's have a chat about living and surviving in Vietnam while we watch out my trip to work from behind. This is my apartment. Ho Chi Minh City is a city of uh, somewhere between 9 and 12 million people and it's probably one of the more populated uh, cities of the world. Um, compared to somewhere like Sydney where I grew up, it's a very different place. So as we leave my apartment, I ask the question for you to consider, could you really live here? Well, you've got to be a pretty special person to survive in, in a city like uh, Vietnam or Ho Chi Minh City. Um, most cities around Vietnam are pretty similar. They have all their, their, their idiosyncrasies. They're, they're, they're all a bit different. Hanoi is very different to uh, Ho Chi Minh City, but it still has the same Vietnamese culture as its foundation. Um, it's a place that wears you down. Uh, and and this, is, this is the point of my discussion today. Now I have about a two to three kilometre drive from my apartment that you can see in the background there uh, to, my, to my office and I am very, very lucky having such a short drive. But even that short drive, um, yeah, this video is something like 12 minutes long and that was cut down um, a little bit from, from the original. So my, my, the best case scenario, my two kilometre trip is about a 15 minute trip to work. Um, you know, it, it, the traffic's pretty bad. Um, as you can see here, um, cars take up a big part of the road and have really wrecked the city. Uh, before so many cars came into the city, um, the traffic did flow a little bit better. And, to, and, and this video was taken in the dry season, so you've also got to consider the wet season where it rains every day and you're sitting on this road in you know, absolute pouring rain with a poncho over you um, it can wear on you one of the big one of the other big uh, issues there and you can probably see it and you will see it later in the video as i arrive at work is the pollution now the actual um pollution on this day i took this video was actually quite good it was, it was one of the better days that i've seen in, in the past month or two and um, pollution in Ho Chi Minh City is at best uh, diabolical, mainly caused from factories and people burning. Now, they have, there's still this uh, culture of uh, sweeping the leaves up and burning them on the side of the road. And when, when, they, when they do do that, um, oh my god, the place, yeah, you can't see 200 metres sometimes for the pollution. Um, so add to that factories, um, trucks, uh, and of course the, um, you know, the eight, nine million motorbikes that get around the city every day. And you've got a recipe for really bad pollution. I believe Hanoi is also the same um, in that they really struggle with their air pollution. And it's one of the really, really bad things about living in such a big city. Um, as I said, I'll go back to this one comment all the time, it wears on you. You know, sitting out in the sun, um, I think I was on my way to work about 7.30 in the morning, uh, this video was taken, and as you can see, the sun's already bright, it's probably already 29 degrees, 29, 30 degrees. Um, uh, it will reach a maximum temperature on this day of around 34, 35 degrees. So, you know, there is no such thing as cold weather. Um, the, uh, a freezing cold day in Vietnam or in Ho Chi Minh City is around 20 degrees and it usually happens about 3 o'clock in the morning um, late, uh, on a late December, early January morning 
um, and it usually only happens once or twice a year it's 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 pretty bizarre in fact it's actually cooler in the summer when the rain comes and uh, cools the place down but you also get soaking wet um, this street is Ung Bang Kim uh, one of the main arterial roads that just get across the city uh, it's not a it's not a main road as such but it's used as an arterial for people coming from the outer suburb of uh, Govapen District 12 to get across to uh, not into the city but you know, across to the other parts like uh, District 2, Taodin, Anfu and of course around Bintan where a lot of offices are now in um, Win Hu Khan uh, which is the landmark to District 1 road. Um, as you can see this street has a lot of street food and um, that's how I get my breakfast every morning. In fact when we get around the corner um, I'll actually stop and buy my little bum mi dip, my uh, my meat uh, and salad uh, bread roll that I buy most mornings from this lady. She's quite a, a lovely lady and she makes a pretty good um, bread roll. Um, living in Vietnam, as I said, it wears on you. Um, you have all these little things. There's, 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 there's not many major things to complain about. Um, of course, the visa system can get you. Uh, there I am, say good morning everyone. I just thought I'd take my helmet off to show you around a bit. That's a bum bow lady. I've never brought anything off her, but they look quite good. I, I do eat them occasionally, but I, I just, I've just never brought from her. Um, here we see a motorbike accident. Um, if you have a quick look here, I've, um, there's a, just a bit of a bit of a touch up and the girl fell off the bike. There she is and she's getting all back up on. There you go, no one's hurt, everyone's happy. And that happens every day in Vietnam, yeah? Hardly a day goes past where um, someone doesn't have a bit of a tumble. Um, in fact, I think, um, what was it, two days ago, I actually got hit by a car. I pulled up on a, a main street and the car just decided to hit me from behind and gave, gave me a bit of a nudge. I didn't, I didn't fall off the bike, uh, but certainly felt the nudge. And um, it just happens all the time, yeah? So you've got to accept those bumps and scratches on your vehicle if you own a, a motorbike in Vietnam. Um, certainly I've had, um, I wouldn't say hundreds, but certainly I've had many. And it's just all part of the, the fun of living in Vietnam. One of those things that wear on you, you know. In Australia, you wouldn't dare touch another person's car or motorbike. But here, um, broken mirrors, clipping your elbows on the way through, it's just a daily event. Getting down to where my, um, just there actually on the left hand side, that's, where the, that's the girl who uh, does my hair, I've been going there for about two years, doesn't speak any English, and another thing that wears on you, doesn't speak any English, but such a nice friendly person and I really enjoy going there, I don't need to tell her what to do, she just does what she does, and the price is really really cheap, you know, um, for a full haircut, shave, um, and including colour for my hair, it will cost me around fifteen dollars, which is just fantastic. You know, um, I think of a haircut in my hometown of Sydney at the moment. You're looking at about forty dollars or so. Um, so fifteen dollars for the whole lot is just a bargain. Yeah, and she's a good, good. Um, she does, she does cut and colour very, very well. Just about to turn into the street that I um, basically I work in. That's a little flower. Was it a um, nursery? So um, plants there and they also have a cafe inside it's actually quite nice the fruit lady on the corner is there 365 days a year um, you can always buy fruit on that corner which I do occasionally again we got more street food and a thing called Quan Quan is like a little um, a little restaurant where you will eat food but it's not a restaurant it's just a it's a food place or a cafe a diner if you're American it's probably a you know, diner is the best um, the best way to describe it, yeah. You go in, you eat one type of food, you know, boom ba, pho, com tam. Um, there's uh, gata just there, that one there. Um, and um, you go in, you eat, eat quickly, and then you walk out. Um, it's the way that we eat our meals here. Here's my bum me fit lady. Now, what is so special about her is that the bread she makes is really soft and doughy, and I just love it. Most bread in Vietnam has got a very, cr a very crusty outside. 
and the inside doesn't have a lot of weight in it. And when you eat them at your office desk, the crumbs just fall everywhere and make an absolute bloody mess. And this particular girl here, she makes a very doughy soft bread and it doesn't create crumbs. So when I'm able to have my coffee and my bread roll at my desk while I'm watching YouTube in the morning, it doesn't make a mess. So the cleaning item is happy and also it tastes pretty good. So it's my favorite type of bread. So that's why I always prefer to go to this lady. She's just making my, um, my, my, uh, my roll fresh at the moment. That's uh, across there is Lom Chow, which is one of the main uh, pharmacy brands. Um, medicine's a, a strange thing. You don't really need a prescription, but you need to show that you actually need medicine, if you know what I mean. So if you get a letter from the doctor and you go to the pharmacy and they've got it, they'll give it to you. But then if you keep on going back asking for more, they'll give you more. So if you have a like a like a, a, an empty packet of a special medicine, they'll keep on giving it to you. But if you just walk in and ask for it, um, sometimes they'll turn you away and sometimes they'll give it to you. I actually take uh, medicine for anxiety and um, the, 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 the drug I take. Some pharmacies will give it to me, some pharmacies won't. But my local pharmacy, not a problem because they know I take it. They know the doctor originally um, issued it. And so I just go in and bang, she's there. Okay, I've got my, I've got my uh, bread roll for brekkie and I'm off for my last little stretch to, the, to my office, yeah? Um, in the shade of the morning, this street's uh, quite quite pleasant and not as much traffic. We're just coming up with the Pearl Plaza, which is on the right hand side. There's Coffee House on the left, one of the major coffee cafe brands. So, you know, um, you've got to really want to live here. You can't choose to live in Vietnam just because it's a place to go. You've really got to research it. Um, I would suggest spending a holiday, a month here at least to get the feel for the place before you decide to move here um, because it is a place that can just wear on you. As much as I love it and it's an amazing place, it can just wear on you. There's Pearl Plaza where I often go for lunch. Almost a shopping center now. They've converted a lot of their retail to office space because retail is dying in Vietnam. And there is the tallest building in Southeast Asia being, sorry, tallest building in Vietnam being Landmark 81, yeah, which is very, I'm very fortunate to have that just outside my office. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. That's my trip to work. And um, see you on the next trip, yeah? Have a great day. Bye-bye.